Hey, this isn't the cold open, but it is me, Darian. And it's me, Davis. And we just want to do some real quick housekeeping before the episode starts. First, we want to shout out our new patron, Megan Gaw. Thank you so much, Megan. Speaking of patrons, we want to use our little podcast to do some good. So we're taking a page from the Potterless podcast, and every month we'll be donating $1 for every patron we have on Patreon and donating to a children's literacy group. For February, we're supporting Room to Read. Room to Read works with local organizations to help develop literacy skills among primary school children. They also support girls to complete secondary school. We currently have two patrons, so we'll also be donating $20 out of pocket, bringing this month's donation to $22. Finally, we want to thank The Skim for featuring us in the newsletter and welcome all of our new listeners who found us from our feature in the Daily Skim. You all have a great taste in podcasts and daily newsletters. That's everything. Now, on to the show. Actually, I got a quest to get to, so you guys have a good one. What? Do you know what your open is going to be before you do it, or do you just kind of oh well plan it? I mean, I always say the same thing every time, right? Well, I mean, like your cold opening. Oh, the, no, the cold opening, I find when I'm editing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it comes from somewhere else. in the It Got comes it. from something that would get cut mm-hmm. from the podcast, mm-hmm. but something that I think was relevant enough or funny enough that could be the cold open. Okay. So I have no idea what it's going to be. Hello, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon, where we explore ancient myths and their modern retellings, birding Rick Brydens, Percy Jackson, and the Olympians. This is Chapter 9, Ares. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Daring Smart. DJ is not here today. He wandered into the big house looking for some canned wine, ended up accidentally getting a prophecy from the hippie in the attic, and now he's on a quest. So instead, today I'm joined by a very special guest co-host, hailing from Cabin 16, Skylar Barsanti. What is up, everyone? I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. This is my cool friend, Skylar. Did we say what cabin I'm from? Well, I said cabin 16. Okay. Now you get to say what that means. Okay. Cabin 16. That is the house of Nemesis, goddess mm-hmm. of divine retribution. Mm-hmm. So fitting. So fitting. No, so fitting. So fitting. I named the cactus after you her once. Name it. Yes, you did. Is the cactus still with us? The cactus is <laughs> in the, cactus, the garbage. The cactus is in the underworld. You know what? It would, well... I got rid of the cactus a long time ago, but it would be funny if it was, the, the pot is still at the old office that I no longer work at. So, Nemesis <laughs> is no longer with us. Never, did, did you ever get your stuff back from? No. 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 They just never sent you, you no. quit. Are you never, well, what about your multitude poster? Still there. Oh, no. Still there. You may have to do some divine retribution to get your shit I back. I will have to get my shit back someday. Oh, That's, no. I know. I, my poor shark mug. Your poor shark mug. Okay. I'm upset. That's okay. Um, we're okay. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna be especially okay because we're gonna talk about Aries. Good. Good. Yes. Yep. Because you are guest co-host, that means I get to ask you this question. Skylar, what do you know about Aries? What do I know about Aries? I know my sister is an Aries. <laughs> but but not the same kind of Aries. Are we sure? Yes. She was born in April. Uh-huh. So she is an Aries, but not the but not, same not kind of Aries. Aries. I know he is but the. I met your sister. Right. I know he is the god of war, mm-hmm. and that's about it. And that's honestly really all there is to Aries, even in terms of Greek mythology. So let, we'll start at the basics. Aries, god of war, son of Zeus and Hera. So okay. Okay. One of the few times that Zeus was having a kid with someone who was actually his wife. Bare minimum. Bare fucking minimum. Bare fucking minimum. Good for you. Good for you. Thing is, Zeus and Hera both hated Ares, according to Homer. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because everybody hated Ares. Even the Greeks didn't like Ares. I don't want this to turn into like an Ares sympathizer show, wherein I feel bad because he probably had a really shitty childhood. I mean, yeah. It's like the one time Zeus has a legitimate child with his actual wife. Mm-hmm. turns out to be the god of war that's a lot to grow up with mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. yeah no that no that's that that's fair tell me more no, I'll tell you more. so there was another time where zeus does have a child with his actual wife okay that's hephaestus who's like the god of like engineering and okay like, he's he cool to, no he's really really he's, cool he's pretty dumb. right right so Ares does have an affair with hephaestus's wife aphrodite so we can just not sympathize with Ares. fuck Aries. No, it's good fuck Aries. fuck Aries, everyone we're not a fan of Aries. not here. a fan don't be like Aries. don't be like Aries. So basically, there's, I mean, there's not a 
really a lot to go. We could just have like a spark notes list of like, and then Ares was here and he did this and he did this, but he doesn't have a lot of like myths because okay. really he, beyond the fact that he has affairs with Aphrodite and one time Hephaestus literally caught them in the act and everybody came and pointed and laughed and then he got kicked out of Mount Olympus for a while. Uh-huh. He doesn't have a lot of like character. Hmm. He will be mentioned as like an Ares sided with the Trojans in the Trojan War, hmm. or and then Ares was captured by these giants. But he's not like Apollo, where he does things, or like Hermes, or like Artemis. They don't have like quests and yeah, adventures. Like quests or, yeah, 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 yeah. He is literally more like just a symbol for being that that kind of bloodthirsty warfare, which is like why the Greeks don't like him, except for like Sparta. Didn't they make this up, though? They could no, have given him did. a better story. No, but even in that, they still, even in the, the Greek story, when they describe where he comes from, they would say he came from, like, this other land, like, north of Greece, with, like, these warlike people. Even though he was, like, a god of Olympus, he's still not with us. So no one wants to associate with this guy. No, no, no. He didn't really have any cities where he was worshipped. Even, like, Sparta would be like, yeah, warfare. But they weren't, like, he didn't have, like, major temples he didn't you know, have like an athens you know that makes sense though because like war is nothing to be celebrated mm-hmm. so do i feel bad for the guy yes is this his whole shtick though also yes it is it is his whole his whole damn shtick so he like, like you said war is nothing to be celebrated and even the couple times when they're like oh yes the soldiers like reveled in like the the battlefield of Ares, it would often be followed up with they were so glad they got the fuck out of there and managed to live to yes. see tomorrow is there a god of like like victory or triumph. Yeah, it's Nike. Nike, okay. Mm-hmm. More likely to associate you want with Nike. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or for the Greeks, it would have been Athena, who was the goddess of like warfare, but specifically like strategy and mm-hmm. wisdom on the yes. battlefield. Like that's what you want. Nobody wants to celebrate their conflict. No, no, no. Yeah, because Ares was literally like conflict. Uh, in mythology by Edith Hamilton, mm-hmm. see, he is described as murderous bloodstain. The incarnate curse of mortals. That's not flattering. No, not a, not flattering. But in addition to being like, oh, the god of like war and chaos and bloodshed and battle and all this stuff, dude's a fucking coward. That that d- honestly doesn't surprise me. No, no, that's another thing he described in like Homer and in the Iliad as like a whining god who like he'll just run away the first injury, like the first chance that he's gonna get hurt or lose, he just dips. So I think we should call this episode Ares is a bitch ass instigator <laughs> because like he incites the drama and the mm-hmm. conflict but mm-hmm. doesn't actually get involved well i mean because he does he does want to get involved like he wants to start the bar fight and then he wants to be in the bar fight but as soon as someone bigger shows up and he gets a cut a little bit of a broken bottle he's crying to daddy which we see in percy jackson right we see mm-hmm. all of this we're like Nobody likes Ares. He, right. Like you said, he's an instigator. Like when Percy's around him, he feels angry and he sees every teacher who was ever a dick to him when he looks in his eyes and he just like hates him so much. And that's what Ares wants. He wants that rage. He wants that anger. He wants people to throw the first punch because he wants to punch him right back. But as soon as this 12 year old nicks him with a little bit of the sword, it's barely a paper cut. He runs away, but also leaves an inferno that would have just killed Percy if he hadn't looked away at the right time. Like, he's a dick. You can't see me shaking my head, but it's <laughs> happening. You can feel it, It's though. happening. I mean, I do love his whole persona in the series, right? Because he's like, he's like a rock star, right? No, that's Hades. No, fuck. Yeah, Damn it. No, Hades. No, I thought that's what we were talking about. I was getting them mixed up. Mm, okay, no. here go my notes. We're going to talk about the movie. Okay, I that. don't actually remember his... Okay, see, I didn't No, because I'm didn't... sitting here, too, and I'm trying to remember... Because, okay, no, you're right. It is not... Hades. No, he's... Fuck. Is, is Hades... Is Ares even in the movie? We have a no. Rule, we have a rule. We don't talk about the movie. On the no, podcast. he's not, and that's what I was super stoked for. I was like, yeah, because he's like, he's like a petty rock star. Yeah. No, that's Hades. I'm so sorry. Wow. No, no you're good. You're good. I don't actually remember when Ares. Which book? When does it? When does so Ares is in the first book. Okay. He, don't remember. He's he's a he's a uh, a douchey biker guy. He's like douchey oh. biker like, guy. He's, he's not, that I'm makes not sense. Douchey, but like jackass biker guy okay so i okay so the bar fight thing really works Mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. he shows up on like a bike and with a dragon and chains and like tricks these 12 year olds into going on a quest for him knowing that they're gonna get like attacked by like the best this is like golden (laughs) net stuff that's so obnoxious it is but i don't like that but it really does bring annabeth and percy and grover together as like a cohesive okay okay so conflict will do that but again they're 12 and they're already on a quest so like fuck off 
He's also in the book the one who actually has the lightning bolt and is trying to arrange all the chaos because he's easily manipulated by Kronos. But you know. But you know. This is not Kronos' episode. It's not. I don't even know how to react to some of these things. (laughs) Okay, so what else does Ares do? As I said, not a lot. Not a lot. Okay, he instigates the problem, problem, then bounces. Let's see. One thing I was surprised to read about while doing some research, because again, there's not like a lot of like substantial Ares myths to go mm-hmm. on. There was one time when he kills Palerotheus, who's one of Poseidon's sons, which obviously upsets Mount Olympus and everyone's like, okay, well now we have to have like a tribunal. Like, what the fuck? Okay, well it turns out Ares killed him because he, being the Palerotheus, raped Ares' daughter. Mm, so he don't, kills that guy. Don't do that to the god of war. No. No, I mean, don't do that to Don't do it to anyone. Nobody, right, but, like, but... That seems like a, a, a bad idea for a lot of reasons. And this is, I think, the one time we can sympathize with Ares a little bit. Because he does go and kill that guy. I probably would, too. But... Yeah. Yeah. No. And then the last episode we talked about was Medusa. Mm-hmm. And, um... Yeah, usually women in that situation don't have any sort of justice whatsoever. So. Classic. 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 So that's the one time Ares was kind of not a dick. Okay. That doesn't make up for it. No, it doesn't make up for Ares in general. No. No. Uh, But here's another thing that, Skylar, you will be uniquely interested in. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Ares, the father of Hippolyta. What? Mm Mm-hmm. And for our audience, who doesn't automatically know that, who is Hippolyta? Hippolyta is the queen of the Amazons. My queen. Mm -hmm. Queen of the Amazons. Big love for Hippolyta. Yep, yep. That's her dad? That's her dad. How does that work? Well, here's what's fascinating. They're ruining Wonder Woman. Okay, well, (laughs) they're, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, the Greeks are ruining Wonder Woman? The what? The Greeks are ruining Wonder Woman? No, I mean, like, how, how is Ares Hippolyta's father if, like, they have to defeat him? Oh, we're gonna get there. Okay, good. So so here's, in Greek mythology, once again, we're gonna quote Edith Hamilton here. Okay. Not far from here was a country of the warrior women, the Amazons, the daughters, strangely enough, of the most peace-loving nymph, Sweet Harmony. But their father was Ares, the terrible god of war, whose ways they followed and not their mothers. The Amazons were not gentle foes, basically. Like, th- these are the Amazons. They oh, are, they're badasses. That's where they get their warrior stuff they're, from. They're, they are relentless badasses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So in Greek mythology, like, they're, like, Ares is considered the father of the Amazons, because he's the father of Hippolyta, and then... Harmony the Nymph, and then, or Harmony the Nymph is her mother, and then mm-hmm. that's where we get the Amazons from. Interesting. Which is very different than the most noteworthy example of Ares in modern pop culture, which, Skylar, once again, you will be uniquely qualified to share with your listeners. So, Sky, where do we see Ares? Why are you, why are you here? Why am Sky I here? Let's, for this episode? let's talk about why I'm here. I love Wonder Woman. 2017 and on, so much. Mm-hmm. I love her outfit. Yep. I love her hair. I love her sense of self. I love her sense of justice. I love that she tries so hard and is just like a good fucking person. Mm-hmm. I love that she loves ice cream because so do I. Yes. I love her so much that I paid someone to make me a custom Wonder Woman costume. Fuck yeah, you did. Last year. And I still have it. And it's so good. It's so good. You look fucking it's great. It's so in it. good. That was your rock climbing goals. That was like the like ninety eight percent of the reason I started rock climbing was because I said I want to have arms that look like Wonder Woman's arms, mm-hmm. and I think I've kind of achieved that. You crushed it, yeah. We've gotten pretty close, I would say. And that's how much I love Wonder Woman. She inspires me. Since Wonder Woman twenty seventeen, no movie has worked up the amount of reveal or anticipation as like No Man's Land for me. Like mm-hmm. that's peak superhero reveal. It's so dramatic it's so well put together i cried i cried like i was i was overwhelmed seeing her come out of the trench having been told you can't do this thing Mm -hmm. you can't win this fight it's not something we're gonna do and she says fuck it and she goes out and she makes it happen that's right that's the energy i love and that's why you're here to talk about wonder woman and that's why i'm here to talk about wonder woman she's my hero so she sort of shows up for the first time on our screens, not really for the first time. No, she's been around. But... She's been around. For me, she didn't exist before 2017 mm-hmm. because Patty Jenkins delivered the greatest DC yes. superhero movie 
in the current we're canon. not taking critiques i'm wonder not i'm not one. taking questions or critiques <laughs> Don't add us. Wonder Woman 2017 is the greatest DC movie made to date. Mm -hmm. And Ares is the main villain. He is. And it's just so good because he's played by David Thewlis, who all credit given to him is not, probably not the most intimidating person who could play the God of War, but mm -hmm. that's what makes it so good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what Patty Jenkins was going for. I think that's yeah. genius. That's yeah. what she was going for. Do we need to tell the people what Wonder Woman 17 was about. No, yeah, I think we do because definitely have gotten the habit of sometimes just assuming everybody knows things. Right, so okay. So guys, go on, tell us, what it, tell me, remind me, I have not seen this movie in okay. a while. Wonder Woman. We open. Mm -hmm. We actually open in Paris, but that part's not, not really important <laughs> right now. Okay, so we first meet Diana, mm -hmm. the only child on the island of Themyscira, which is where all the Amazons live, mm -hmm. and they're super badass. Mm -hmm. And they do all this fighting stuff. And Diana really wants to be a warrior. But her mom is like, no, you can't. And who's her mom? Her mom is Hippolyta. And who is she again? Queen of the Amazon. That's right. That's what she is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But she really wants to learn to fight because she's super impressed. And her favorite person is Antiope, who is like general of the Amazons. Mm -hmm. And she's super cool. Anyway, so Diana grows up. She finally gets her mom to agree to start her training mm -hmm. she's a super great fighter she's mm -hmm. got these superpowers that she doesn't really understand yet but she's an amazon so she doesn't really question them because everybody here is badass everyone here is badass and they all have cool super human abilities mm -hmm. anyway so she's got no idea what's going on in the outside world she just lives on this cool island and one day steve trevor rolls up in a broken down airplane and he crashes mm -hmm. into the water and she rescues him and she's like what is this and he's like i am a man <laughs> and he's like there's a war going on and she's like fuck like a war like we're the amazons we're supposed to fight wars literally we're literally like that's our whole job she's like aries starts wars there's a war defeat aries problem solved mm -hmm. so diana breaks steve trevor out of the mascara mm -hmm. they get on a boat they talk about reproduction <laughs> they oh. go to london they go to go fight on the front lines Diana emerges as this great Wonder Woman. She does the whole no man's land thing. So and it's one of good. the greatest scenes in movie history. I cried. It was great. World War One. This is, in order, this is, yeah. So, so like, Steve Trevor shows up and he says there's a war going on. It's the whole world is involved. And Diana is like. War to end all wars. Only Ares could instigate a war on the entire planet. Because mm -hmm. he's a bitch ass instigator. Bitch ass instigator. So she follows him to London. They end up on the front lines. She's super convinced that Ares is behind this. And Steve Trevor was like, no, it's like just a bunch of bad dudes. Like people make bad choices. It's what humans do. Mm -hmm. She's really convinced it's Ares. She finds this guy, General Ludendorff, who's Anne. Mm -hmm. She's convinced that he's Ares. Diana runs a sword, the God Killer, mm -hmm. who she has been told this is the only thing that can kill a God. She runs it through Ludendorff. It's like, joke's on you, Diana. That's not Ares. It's just so, a guy. Just an asshole guy. Not just, a, Nazi, just an asshole. Because this is 1914. Right. But. Just an asshole. So then Ares materializes in the form of Sir Patrick, and she's like, no. It's like, you wanted to do the, what are the accords? The, the fucking... The armistice. The armistice. He's okay. supposed to be negotiating the armistice. Turns out he's been instigating the conflicts the entire time. Mm -hmm. They have a big blowout fight. He gets some armor. He gets a real CGI. Basic, basically, it all it all comes down to she has to she defeats Ares and blows him up spectacularly. Mm -hmm. Very, but because really, she's the god killer. Because she is in fact the god killer, which is what her mom was hiding from her. Thanks, mom. Because her dad is Zeus. Because her father is Zeus. Okay. She is the god killer made from clay. But not really. But not really. So it ends, and she learns to accept. You know, like. People have to choose right and wrong, and they're not always going to choose the right, but they that's thats how it goes. Steve dies. Steve dies in an explosion. It's he sacrifices very, himself. He sacrifices to himself. Stop a bomb. It's very brave, very sad. Mm -hmm. And that is Wonder Woman 2017. Mm -hmm. The only version that exists for me, truly. Yep. yep. It's a, it is a very good one. It's so it's good. Oh, those. yeah. Here's what, I've, here's what I've discovered. There are two kinds of people in this world. Mm -hmm. Men who didn't like Wonder Woman 2017. Mm-hmm. And women who liked Captain Marvel better than 2017. Okay. There's no in-between. I Every... like there are three, and it is the people who liked Wonder Woman. Right. Well, there, well, there's, there's, well, yeah. Yeah, well. It's fine. Moving on. Yeah, moving on. No guy I talked to about Wonder Woman has a reason for why he didn't like it. And the answer is because he's a man. Like, it's weird. Yeah, because it's, it's most of the guys from, like, I friends with the talk to, they're like, oh, yeah, I liked Wonder Woman. And maybe it's not necessarily their favorite superhero movie, right. but it doesn't have to be. Well, but it's weird when they say, I don't like it. And you're like, do you just not like good movies? Right. Do you just hate masterful cinema? I like, bet you also liked Rogue One. 
you probably also like Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna how the podcast blows up is because we end up on Reddit and a bunch of all right trolls. All Whatever. Right. Well, I mean, they just well, but here's the thing though is that like, and this is I think what I spoke to one of my many like dating app dudes mm-hmm. about <laughs> because we get into this. Mm-hmm. I make us get into this because yeah, yeah, yeah. I really he needs to like Wonder Woman. Need, that's no. a requirement, or have a good reason, or have it. a really good reason for I didn't. But they usually don't. It really comes it comes down to choice. Mm-hmm. I think because I think women are more likely to see attributes and characteristics they like and identify with in male and female characters. Traditional mm-hmm. male female characters are superheroes, mm-hmm. whereas men will really only identify with characteristics they see in other men. Mm -hmm. So when a woman comes on screen and is being badass and awesome and wants to hold a baby, but also wants to eat ice cream, but also like punch it, throw a fucking tank, like throws a tank. They're like, Oh, not for me. I choose the persona I see in these other like male superheroes. Like Mm -hmm. it comes down to choice, which is like, I didn't know. I didn't really think I was going to get into this whole speech, but here it is. Here we go. Get for it. The other kinds of people or women who liked Captain Marvel better than they liked Wonder Woman, which is totally fine because I love Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. God, I loved watching her blow up spaceships. That was super God, fun. I love the end. She finally gets her fucking powers. She finally gets to be her. And finally not gets to be the her. Hell she's been. But really, I think it also comes down to choice that like you can like Captain Marvel better as a character or as a film. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with you. I digress. You know Wonder I am. Woman is a better Wonder Woman is a better film. Tighter film. I still like Captain Marvel. But really what Captain Marvel does is that they gave she gave those women choice. Yeah. To say, okay, now I have two entirely female led superhero films. And I'm not talking like, yes, there are other female characters, Gamora, Black Widow. And we had like Cat uh, Catwoman or like Superwoman. Right. Superwoman, like, but those were not good movies. Right. We're talking about like in the last ten years, mm-hmm. right? It, it gave it, Captain Marvel gave them choice, and I think that's a wonderful thing because before then, if you didn't like Wonder Woman, it's like, well, you'll never get another yeah female. You had big you budget, better like it, or you'll never you better get like one. you and better like sucks. it, or you'll never get it again. Yeah, Captain Marvel presented an option, which is something that men who like superhero films had for the last decade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there are two kinds of people: men who didn't like Wonder Woman and women who liked Captain Marvel better. Yeah. I will not be taking any questions. Thank you so much. Okay. Yep. No, no, add us unless you want to follow us on Instagram. Yes. It's a podcast of Poseidon. That's Poseidon, P O S E I D O N. Yep. Yeah. That's Wonder Woman. So, how, based on what you've just learned about Ares in this mm-hmm. podcast, how do you think, what do you think of the version of Ares we see in Wonder Woman? I think it makes total sense because his whole thing, when he's given his whole, when he's like monologuing to Diana, mm-hmm. he's like, I don't make them do shit. Like, yeah. I just give them the ideas and they act on them. And that tracks for a guy who, like, starts the bar fight but then runs away as soon as he gets a little cut on the forehead Mm -hmm. he didn't make anyone do anything he was just there to convince them or give them the ideas to like start wars yeah so that so that totally tracks and it's okay that he's walking around in the body of like a pasty british dude because Mm -hmm. it's unassuming Mm -hmm. and nobody's gonna suspect him also he's in the land of like men so like why would they be like that guy yeah that guy no he's aries he's a white guy obviously he's He's in charge here right yeah he's a god of war Mm -hmm. no it makes it makes total sense and Thank you, Patty. Here's something I recently learned. Okay. Because Patty Jenkins was recently on, well, like, not recently as of the release of this episode. Sure. In the last year. Really, yeah, in, in December. So recently as of the recording of this episode. Okay. Patty Jenkins was on an episode of Mark Maron's WTF podcast, mm-hmm. where she actually talks about making Wonder Woman and stuff. Specifically talks about how that big fight with Ares at the end of the movie was a studio mandate. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. they just need their big blow em ups Like, mm-hmm. they, mm. Because it was supposed to, like, it wasn't supposed to be more subtle like Wonder Woman 84 is, mm-hmm. wherein people just kind of decide to change, and mm-hmm. there is there doesn't have to be this big blowout fight yeah. in order for that to happen. Studios want what they want. Studios want what they want, Person- yeah. I liked the ending fight. I'm in the minority here. Sorry, Patty. Like, I was entertained. Like, yeah, I like Big Bad. Mission accomplished. Like, like I was entertained. It makes sense. I mean, because I think like, what, what she says is, like, you... He's the god of war. He doesn't have to look all godly to have his god powers. It's still sure. kind of hot. But I also would have been like, you're going to make me watch this tasty white dude fight. Right. Galgano he gets, at her he gets peak. swole for no reason. Like, yeah, that was. I mean, I get he could probably shape shift, but like all of a sudden he was like, I want to be eight and a half feet tall and have giant muscles. Yeah, that was super wild looking. That was too much. It was very Aries, though. But if they hadn't have done that, 
I wonder what the alternative to like her understanding the full extent of her god killer powers mm -hmm. because when she find when she kind of he shoots lightning and shit at her and she absorbs it and she takes it and she harnesses it uh -huh. and then she fires it back at him like double time because mm -hmm. she's a demigod of Zeus right how else was that supposed to happen? Because the whole movie we'd been building up to, like, she doesn't understand what happens when she, like, reacts and, like, releases her power. Mm -hmm. Like, there would be, like, what would be the answer to that without that ending? I don't know. I wonder if he could still could have, like, thrown, like, energy shit at her and still could have, like, done that kind of stuff, but without the, I'm a massive monster now. Because, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. he's a god. Yeah. He doesn't have to look big and imposing. Mm -hmm. And I would think the classic, like, mytho mythological greek version of Ares would instantly be like i'm a massive armor i've got this fucking helm like i look a terrifying monster mm -hmm. but like definitely feels like the Ares that patty jenkins had set up in wonder woman 2017 didn't have that vibe mm -hmm. he was definitely more like i don't have to do that because like i said he's like i just put ideas in their heads and then they do the rest like mm -hmm. i didn't actually do anything mm -hmm. i'm over here trying to stop this war remember mm -hmm. because he's a god and he would know that this Armistice is like a kind of a raw deal, and we're just gonna get a bigger war eventually from it. Yeah, and see, no, is this? But when is a good time to foray into 1984 and what I really, really right wanted? You're like right. Before, okay, okay, let's go right now. I loved 1984. Okay. Wonder Woman 84, glorious. We waited all pandemic for it. All pandemic. And like for that it. was what was getting me through, and I'm so glad I got to see it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It was so shiny, even soaking wet. Cheetah looked better than the entire cast. She film. fucking did, she looked, though. Even mm -hmm. soaking wet from head she to toe, she looked better, better than, than the entire cast, cast movie. 2019, yep. Which we saw in theaters. And it was great. I mean, in, in Cheetah's defense, her scene was at least in the dark. So they could hide. Yeah. But, but no, no, no. Yeah. I would say it's still better. Still soaking better. Wet, still better than cats. Still better. Soaking wet and in the dark is better than cats. But here's what I wanted was missing. Somebody get Patty Jenkins on the phone because I need, I really need answers for this. And that essentially we get this whole buildup in 2017 where Wonder Woman defeats Ares, at least in his physical, I don't know, I don't know if gods have a physical form, but. I guess Zeus dies. Like Ares sure. killed Zeus. Right, okay. So, so she, like... she annihilates his corporeal form mm -hmm. and that's it. And she accepts that like the world of men are, they're gonna make stupid decisions, but that is what, their free will is all about. Mm -hmm. You can't force them. They're going to do what they do and hopefully they learn from it. You have to choose love. You have to choose love. But what I didn't get is that, like, we spent so much time talking about, like, Diana's grief for losing Steve. What mm -hmm. I really wanted to know is, like, how did Diana cope with the knowledge that, like, wars continued? Yeah. We got a bigger one, like, is 30 that, years like, later. In the same lifetime of the men who would have fought in World War One, we get World War II. Mm -hmm we get Vietnam, mm -hmm. we get eventually the Cold War, which, yeah, we get more, we get more massive international conflicts. Like, yeah. the atom bomb blows Hiroshima off the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how does Diana deal with that? Like, does she sit there and contemplate that, like, yes, she defeated Ares, but his ideals lived on. It's yeah. like he wasn't defeated at all. Like, yeah. he still won. And how does she come to accept that? Because so much of, like, what's so appealing about Dan is that, like, she's this god, she's this goddess of a figure, yeah. but she still has this incredible humanity. Mm -hmm. And so having that, like, what is, what is that grief? Like, Patty, pl please, like, help me understand how she got through this, because by the time we see her again in 1984, she's super broken up about Steve Trevor, and, like, I get it, I am also broken up about mm -hmm. Steve Trevor. Mm -hmm. I love Chris Pine. Yeah raise but that but there was so much that happened between that like how can she just be sad about steve why do we not understand her sadness about the fact that like the world wars still went on mm -hmm. vietnam still went on it it's like how did she come to terms with the fact that she maybe she didn't really make that big of a difference yeah i don't know it, it's weird because at the end of Wonder Woman 2017. You get that point where she kills the guy who she's convinced that he's Ares. And then Steve is trying to talk to her. He's like, I got to go deal with this plane. Mm -hmm. And she's like, they're still fighting. Why are they still fighting? And he's like, maybe just because people are bad. And maybe that's just the way they are. But like, we, we can't control everything. We just have to do what's right. I can save today. You can save the world. And so he makes this decision to, he knows he's going to die. And he makes this decision to sacrifice himself to stop this bomb, to help prevent things from getting so bad so quick and i feel like i almost wonder if like what if aries wasn't there at all it still would have happened yeah 
and that's but that's the thing. But then the, when Wonder Woman goes and the movie goes on, and then she fights Ares and kills him. Everybody in the fight stops fighting. Like all the people, are like oh wow, they come together, and it almost kind of negates the idea that Ares wasn't responsible for that warfare at all. But then we get obviously the future, and there is more war. But Ares is around, so we. we I feel like there's a lot in the Wonder Woman where like we made Ares such a big deal mm-hmm. in this movie because mm-hmm. as in, in Greek mythology, he was actually the father of the Amazons, mm-hmm. right? Though in DC Comics, we're gonna take a real quick can- tangent to Comic Town. Do you want to come with me? I let's go. Can we hold hands? Yeah, we can hold hold hands. Let's do it. Let's, okay. let's do it. Hooray! So it's DC Comics. They've been around for decades now, which means, as major comic book companies are apt to do, they've done some continuity reboots over the Great. years. So, Ares first shows up in the Wonder Woman number one. Mm-hmm. It was October 1941. Wonder Woman number one comes out. Created by William Moulton Marston, and the artist is H.G. Peter. Mm-hmm. Now, William is the creator of Wonder Woman, the whole thing, right? Ares appears in this very first issue, and then for the rest of the time, he's Mars. But essentially, this is the first iteration of Wonder Woman and the Amazons and all the thing, and essentially, you've got Ares, who wants to create a society of war. Mm-hmm. And he's opposed by Aphrodite, who wants to create a society of love, and so Aphrodite actually creates the Amazons. Mm-hmm. And they exist to oppose Ares and stuff. Uh, we smash cut to Crisis on Infinite Earths, mm-hmm. which was the first massive reboot where all of the different timelines and all the alternate realities. You've seen Spider Verse. So DC good. has the same thing. Mm-hmm. All the realities. They all collide into one. Mm-hmm. And after this happens, so there's a completely new timeline, a completely new continuity. Mm-hmm. And in this new continuity, Artemis is the one who has created the Amazons. See, that makes more sense to me. No, you're right. I mean, Aphrodite is a weird flex. It feels like it comes from someone who didn't know anything about Aphrodite. But also, like, this podcast is about retelling myths and reinterpretations. So, like, who am I to judge? Yeah, well, here's the thing. I can see Artemis creating women-like creatures. Yeah, yeah. So they, so essentially, uh, this is the basically the details like mm-hmm. they are the souls of women who died at the hands of men yeah. and were given newer stronger bodies made from clay transformed into flesh and blood okay see one of the other things i really loved about wonder woman 84 is that yes we do get those two opening scenes i love that we keep the first one on themiscara because it really shows like how big the island is like it's mm-hmm. on a much grander scale World. and you get to see that like there are thousands of amazons and not all of them are warriors mm-hmm. like some of them are do love teachers that. or scholars or politicians, and I'm sure some of them are like beauty queens, and they yeah. make clothing, and they cook, and they take care of all these things. I could see Artemis doing both, making warriors and women who are not traditionally like athletic or warrior like yeah, in nature. Yeah, they want to kick it and maybe like make. I don't see. I eat. don't see Aphrodite exactly. doing that. No, 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 no. It's not her jam. It's Aphrodite not her jam. Is very much. I like, don't see I Aphrod- I don't see Aphrodite making warriors. No, no, I don't either. Sorry, I just don't. That does, I mean, I don't know that much about her. I'm sure she's lovely, but I mean, she's Aphrodite, so yeah. so she's, she's like peak, peak lovely. But yeah, it's a peak lovely. Yeah, that makes much more so, sense. Yeah, I do Artemis. agree. I do. I do like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's Artemis, and that's where we get the. That's where Themyscira actually comes from. Mm-hmm. Is that a Crisis on Infinite Earths? The post okay. Crisis is like because originally they were just called their island was called like Lost Paradise. So this okay. is like Themyscira. <laughs> then we get. New 52, which was another continuity reboot, which is generally considered bad. Just bad. Mm -hmm. For every person, every hero involved, this was bad. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to tell you what they did to the Amazons? Please. You're not going to like it. Damn it. Okay. I'm just going to quote the Wikipedia entry. Thank you, Wikipedia. Here they once again lived on Paradise Island, which was the island from Mm pre-crisis. They didn't have Themyscira. As a race of supernaturally strong women with no use for men, save for periodic mating escapades, three times each century, the Amazons, completely naked, would raid ships in their waters and copulate with the crew. Upon conception, the men were killed to protect the island's secrecy. Nine months later, all the girls were celebrated, while the boys were taken from their mothers and drowned. Feeling sympathy for these discarded progeny, as well as recognizing their potential as a workforce, the smith god Hephaestus exchanged weapons to the Amazons in return for the lives of the Amazonian boys. Sparing them from being cruelly drowned, he raised them as his own sons. And this is also the version where we get Diana as Zeus's daughter Mm -hmm. with Hippolyta. And Hippolyta invented the whole, I molded you from clay, not Mm -hmm. to protect Diana from her own, like, heritage and destiny, but to hide her from the jealous Hera. 
We always gotta hide stuff from the wife. Well, I mean, Hera has a reputation. Yeah. So, mm. I would say that version sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like is that. Bad. No, is bad. Was scrapped when they did Rebirth, which is the most recent okay. reboot they did in like 2016. Okay. So Rebirth goes back to the post-crisis where they were created by Artemis and what have you, but Diana is still Zeus's daughter. So that's why we have Diana as Zeus's daughter mm -hmm. in the movie. Okay. And why Ares is just a dick. Because Ares has just always just been Diana's like rival, not rival, but like nemesis, not peak nemesis, that's I mean, Cheetah, but like. Ares is like the antithesis of Diana. Yeah, everything she's like about. Like polar opposites. Like they are not even about the same thing at all. No, they no, no, do no. not see eye to eye. No, Diana does not instigate. She deals with the problems. She and she doesn't back down no matter how many times she the gets problem. hit. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and I love her. Ares just causes problems and then fails. Ares needs a lesson in accountability. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because that's not cool. No, you don't. You know, Ares. Ares's favorite Taylor Swift album is Reputation. Mm. Yes, you know it is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Which one's Diana's? Oh. What a great question. I haven't even heard them all. I only discovered Taylor Swift like two years ago. So like, I don't, I don't get to, you know, I discovered Wonder Woman and Taylor Swift in the same year. That's not a coincidence. This, this question was coming. That's not this a coincidence. Created. Okay. So Aerie's favorite Taylor Swift album is definitely Reputation mm -hmm. because that whole song where, oh, yeah, 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 where I she's really, like, I, the song. I never trust a narcissist, but they love me. The drama loves him. Like, no, that's bullshit but that's the vibe he goes for mm -hmm. diana's favorite taylor swift album mm -hmm. if i had her only based on the ones that i have heard is, is, is probably lover because it just it seems very her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there is a song track five on lover is the archer and her, that's yeah. why and that's and i have no other explanation though we i don't think we ever actually see her with a bow Except for in no, 84. No, but it does kind of go with the whole Artemis thing um, and the whole, like, mm -hmm. women warriors thing, which I'm super big, so. Yeah, I, I, I do wish they had stuck with the Artemis thing. Even if they were going to have Diana be a child of Zeus in order to be able to stand against Ares. Tracks. Yeah, that mm -hmm, makes sense for mm -hmm. me. Because in the movie, they do have it as Zeus created the Amazons, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zeus yes. created the Amazons to stand against Ares. Mm -hmm. And then hid them away. Yes. To and then protect, to protect them. them because Ares was he after used the them. Last, like, no, well, yeah, he used the last of his power. What was the power of his story? He used the last of his power to do something. Whether it was like hide the island or... I think it's probably hide the island. Yeah, I think it's hide yeah. the island. Yeah, yeah. Invisible jet. What about it? Oh, I just love it. Oh, yeah. No, I just, just invisible jet. Yeah. I have nothing else to well, add. Nothing. <laughs> this is apropos of nothing, but like invisible uh, jet. See, I love, I loved Wonder Woman 84 just because Steve Trevor goes, well, shit, Diana. No shit, Diana. <laughs> and it's so good because I'm like, I don't think that was in the script. Like, that was like, the look on her face after he says that is like, that's actually Gal Gadot, like, realizing that a dumb thing happened. Like, <laughs> well, shit, Diana. And if it was something that was actually in the script, I would love to meet the writer who had the I gall to just, be like, and then Steve says. And then... Oh, was, oh, see, so good. I loved it. I'm not ashamed of that. I did I did like moments of it. I do feel like we spent too much time with Steve. Who, we again, could oh, have what? spent more time with Steve. I guess it, it felt like spending time with Steve and what the movie wanted to be about mm -hmm. were like two different things. That's true. Because the movie wanted to be about people making the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And... Steve was just there to be just great, just great chemistry, mm -hmm. just super fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like ultimately is just there to provide that one scene of heartache where Diana has to sacrifice something in order to like save the day. And I'm like, but she did that. Also, she's already done that. Why doesn't Diana have friends? That's a really good question. It's been 70 years. Like I would have, here's, I would have forgiven it if we had, we saw that one picture of her with Etta Candy when they come to New York, mm -hmm. right? And it's great. I would have loved to hear about the fact that she has not been able to, you, we talked about this, mm -hmm. how like she ages, or she does not age, she is immortal. Mm -hmm. It would be hard to watch her friends age mm -hmm. and die, but we don't talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine it would be difficult to stay anonymous or kind of under the radar as mm -hmm. like an immortal super yeah. goddess, if you had a lot of friends. But see, but that's another thing that I really just, I wanted 
Patty, some, please, please, Patty Jenkins. Tell me why this wasn't. Call me. Yeah. Please tell me more about this. Is it like, like, why doesn't Diana have friends? Because she's so, like, she loves people. Yeah. She really loves people. Like, she runs in the first, like, in 17, she, like, runs up to that lady on the street with the baby and, and Steve's like, like oh my no God, baby right and yeah. she's like blown away that there's another like she's like never like never she knows the baby. babies exist out in the world but she's like never seen a baby. never seen a baby and like and that's like her humanity and her innate need to form connections so mm -hmm. like i think it goes back to like the depth of her grief about the whole aries and situation in world war one is that like aries ideals lived on and i would have liked to i would hope that so much of like what gets her to 84 and her motivation to like wish steve back is just comes from a place of i don't know missing of, connection of miss of missing that connection like wanting that again and yes. somehow being so possibly disheartened by this just the state of the world and all the world the wars and the conflict that she lived through like as a byproduct of like why doesn't diana have friends like she would have no trouble making friends like i would be her friend yeah i would 100 percent. 100 percent. we could friend. take her rock climbing she'd we be better than us be immediately she'd be doing so 13 she would be lead climbing she'd 13s be so good at it and if i fell she would catch me just i catch you be still my heart i literally catch you <laughs> yeah but like if wonder woman caught me it'd, no, it'd be different, it'd be, no, di it'd be different. okay so here's what i just realized mm -hmm. is that steve needed okay, and bear with me yeah steve needed to be the part of your world song from Little Mermaid. Okay. In that, in, in specifically Wonder Woman 84. Because what you're just talking about, like Steve, because it, it felt weird that she was so hung up. Oh, Steve. And the conversation around that is like, oh, when she's talking to, to Barbara, is like, oh, have you ever been loved? And she's like, oh, yeah, once he died. Mm -hmm. Which like, I'm not saying she needed to have fallen in love with other people. Mm -hmm. I, I totally get that. That's fine. But what if instead of focusing on that is like Steve is the representative of the connection she doesn't have anymore, mm -hmm. right? He crash landed on Themyscira. He yep. knew exactly who she was, exactly what the game was, and adored her, loved her. They had this bond, right? And then her friends that she fought with in that era and like at a candy, like they all knew too because they saw her fight. They saw mm -hmm. who she was. Just like at a Caesar, like to have the shield and do these all these badass things and not age. And she doesn't have to explain that to them because they were that connection that was just mm -hmm. inherent. And when they're gone, it's so hard to start again when you cannot say, so I am a daughter of Zeus mm -hmm. and I grew up on this magical paradise island. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, because you just can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so if rather than when she, in 84, rather than just wishing for her dead boyfriend to come back to life, mm -hmm. the wish is for that connection again. And if Steve embodied that connection. Yes. And then I want to tie that in with when she has to give up Steve, mm -hmm. the end of the movie, rather than seeing just that guy again, mm -hmm. it needs to be her comforting Barbara. Mm -hmm. It needs to be, she gave up that old connection and now she is trying to make a new connection mm -hmm. with this woman who has been through a lot and perhaps actually could very much relate and understand Diana mm -hmm. because she wished to be like her and suddenly had all the powers of a demigoddess. Mm -hmm. And things kind of go out of hand. Mm -hmm. So I would have, I think, and I liked Wonder Woman 84 as well, but I feel like that was the thread I was missing, mm -hmm. where it's like, let's, Steve, is, he doesn't just represent dead boyfriend, he represents all the else, all that version of Diana we saw mm -hmm. there that she's lost through the wars mm -hmm. and through the time and through not having those bonds anymore and not being able to go home anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, she tried to find that other Amazon woman and could not find her anywhere. She is kind of utterly alone and mm -hmm. has been for decades. And I think it would have been really cool for it to have ended with more on building that connection. And we mm -hmm. choose love, and we don't just choose love in our actions to not engage in warfare, but we mm -hmm. choose love in the bonds and connections we have with other people. That's where love comes from. It comes from what we do for others and how we relate to them and how we let them into our hearts where we are most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we, any, I'm not saying anybody could stand up to, like, the god of war and shit, but, like, it's almost scarier to let this stranger into you and be like, this is who I am, and can you love me for it, and can I love you back, and can we create something a little more just because we are two people who have this connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like that point. Thank you. That's really good. Nice job. Thanks. Sky, did you have any more thoughts on Aries, or more likely on Wonder Woman? I just... I really just keep thinking about like the gaps in 
just like some, please patty explain to me like what was the what was the point of having Ares as a villain if he was never really going to be defeated and then like what happened to diana after that because that would make me so so sad There's so much there but Ares is a bitch ass instigator mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he just starts fights and then claims he didn't do anything yeah just didn't says it wasn't me wasn't me didn't do it like i didn't i i told him there was a gun on the table but i didn't make him shoot it like I told that's him, Ares. i gave him the idea for poison but like <laughs> right i didn't me, tell him to give him the quantity i didn't tell him to do it that's Ares. that's Ares. Ares sucks. Ares needs a lesson in accountability mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those are my thoughts i think diana is the one to give it to him i don't know <laughs> he wasn't really defeated like i mean he was it's just People like his are, physical, people, like where does a god go when they die? The underworld. Really? Like everyone else? I guess so. Like where else do you go? Lame. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. You tell me. Like, no, I, I'm gonna, where do they go? Like, I, they don't die. Usually they get wounded in the weekend and then they'll like recover their power eventually. Mm -hmm. Like what happened to Ares in the movie? But apparently Zeus died and like every other Olympian? Hmm. Like we don't have Artemis for some reason. Hmm. We don't have Apollo or Hermes. We don't have apparently Hades. I was convinced was going to be the villain of One Woman mm -hmm. 84. You were I was, very convinced. Oh, I was so... Once Master the Lord starts talking about how he's trying to get his, like, all of it back, and he's like, oh, yeah, I also kind of am an expert in, like, gems, things of the earth. And I'm like, it's fucking Pluto. I fucking know. And I was so wrong. That's okay. That's okay. We still have in there. Pascal. He does such a good job. Yeah. So, Ellie, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I really um, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was great. Major goal accomplished. I was on a podcast. You're on a podcast. I hope you'll bring me back. I hope I hope listeners, you let me come back. Wait, well, you did the Artemis episode. So it really do doesn't that. matter at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. So, Sky, because we are a very professional podcast, we've got mm -hmm. a Patreon and everything. Sure. It's, it's patreon.com slash podcast of Poseidon. It's Poseidon, P-O-S-E-I-D-O-N. You can mm -hmm. definitely subscribe and get your bonus episodes. Sky, do you have anything to plug? I don't really do anything like this mm -hmm. i am a big supporter i show up in other episodes yes. i'm like the weird background side character we talk about you a lot and i love that so much we have a rock climbing page you we can do. see us irl falling off of walls doing cool shit mm -hmm. on the rocks boise that is on the rocks boise we also mix cocktails and it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun we just have fun with it yeah that's also on instagram that's the only place that you can find me on the internet Skyler, thank you again so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Awesome. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you had fun. This episode was totally about Aries. Totally. Obviously. Obviously, the whole time. Well, bye, everybody. Until next time. Don't, don't be like Zeus. Sorry. I stole your thunder. Oh, my God. You're I never stole... coming back. I'm sorry. I stole your thunder, but I'm not. Going. Okay, go ahead. Do it. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. Go. I can't even. I've lost all of my moments. Okay, gonna... don't be like Zeus. Have another drink. Or Aries. We're done here. Podcast of Poseidon is created, produced, and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hain. Our cover art is by Audrey Miller. Find her on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Coming out with us on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast of Poseidon. Find all our episodes and episode transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening.